What is up everyone? This is Sarah G and it is Gen Z Gab. Let's get into it. Oh my gosh, has it been a week? And yes, we are going to talk a lot about the writer's strike. And a little bit, yes, AAPI Heritage Month again. Why? Because still Monday mood. And you know what? Things need to be said. Things need recognition and just like some of the people. So I'm going to just start off with the person who wrote the wonderful episode this week of Grey's Anatomy. Yes, I can't go a single episode without talking about it, obviously. Uh, so Julie Wong, who is a writer, who's on the strike right now. So let's 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 give a round of applause to all her and the amazing writers, but like, let's just shine some light on that. I'm thinking about all the other just amazing people in the world of entertainment, like Danny Pudi, Hazan Minhaj, and just obviously Queen Boki, and obviously Midori Francis, Harry Shum Jr., uh, you know, the whole entire cast of Moana. So, Yes, I know I just kind of listed off like a very broad, just there's so many out there of just wide, again, variety. It's so um a wide culture and just think about that again. The next time that you think about, oh, it's AAPI Heritage Month, but do we celebrate every single person, you know, like aside from just on, like, are we celebrating these creators all throughout the year as well. And I've just been thinking about that a lot since last week. And again, yes, I'm still a little confused about why this person last week, Jeannie, trying to like erase everything. And I know I shouldn't, I should stay in my lane. I'm really true, but it just seems like with all these like layers and nuances, etc., it's like, are you freaking kidding me right now? Like, whatever. But yes, I wanted to give a shout out to the amazing writer of the latest Grey's Anatomy episode, like I said last week, I talked about Kingsley Umi, and it's just a whole bunch of different types of diversity, obviously, like we talk about, but yeah, just anyway, wanted to start off with that little bit, and yes, uh, I've been, though, gonna talk, I'm gonna talk more, I think, about some of the things that I've seen in real life, and pop culture, you know, not just my typical rants, because I know that we all love those, but, you know, just this week, I've been kind of in a funk. I mean, when am I not? But, you know, I've been having some opportunities come up, and that's great. I'm still trying to work through a lot of things, but yes, for the love of God, pay the writers what they deserve. And I know I keep mentioning this every week, but it, for God's sakes, it keeps going on longer. Did you not know that the Office cast has been helping Rob Lowe, uh, all Station 19, old old TV shows even, like from Freeform, Baby Daddy, I'm re-watching that. Like, the list goes on and on and on and on. Like, did you... Do we not know this? Like, we need our writers to get paid. I mean, Netflix had, like, their phone go right to a voicemail. I tried calling them this week, and nothing, nothing happened. So they know they're doing wrong, and that whole Stranger Things is another separate thing. So, yeah, deep breath, Sarah. But I think, like, overall, it's just a reminder, again, how much crew is important for so many sets as well as the writers especially but I just I needed to say that quick because god it's so annoying and again yes I'm just at the start of my career or whatever you want to really call it I haven't I did it more as a hobby starting in 2016 and really tried to make a go of it probably in 2020 but it's it is what it is and I'm at the start of it so I have not a lot of power but I do want to keep saying I stand with the writers guild Okay, I stand with you writers. I know what it feels like to work tirelessly and not feel like you're getting support back. So don't worry. I mean, again, I make jokes about middle child stuff, but it's true and I have ADHD. So I, I get some of that feeling. I mean, it's not completely the same, but you know. 
But either way, I guess I'm going to segue this into like, what the hell is going on with all this stuff? Like, I saw Jeremy Allen White all of a sudden is going on and on on the news. Like, what is that? Like the split suddenly. And I don't want to waste too much time because there's kids involved. But uh, I'm actually heartbroken for once in my life. You know, most people care about like what's going on with Taylor Swift and her current boyfriend, which by the way, yeah, not a fan of him. Not really a fan of her. Just saying I'm unpopular by a lot of reasons, but yeah, not, not feeling too much on either of them, but seriously, like she goes from one to another, which, hey girl, you do you fine, but you trying to like completely cover up your boyfriend's bad behavior? Mm, how about not? All right, whatever. But see, I didn't though have like my heart shatter when her and Joe Allen broke up, you know? Like people get so parasocial with so many relationships and I try not to get overly, you know, invested, involved. But suddenly it was kind of like, oh, when you heard about his story, Jeremy Allen White's family, all that stuff, it was like, oh, it's so sweet, it's so sweet. And then it's like, oh shit. But I love him in Bear and I can't wait for season two of Bear. And I that's all I can really say about the situation at this moment because for starters we don't know what's going on in people's personal lives we don't need to know and again there are kids involved so the last thing we really need to do is keep prying into their business talking to you tmz and i've really started to like just change some of my mindset i used to think i really wanted to be a part of like tmz e-news all that stuff kind of entertainment weekly like i like still some of those as guilty pleasures but again it's always like a, I guess I really don't like at the expense of other people. I used to think it was funny before I really understood. And then I'm like, wait, they're prying into people's lives and their kids' lives. And, you know, again, it goes into a lot of that child star content creator kind of exploitation stuff. It's like suddenly it's like these people don't have boundaries and they're now like going after people who are way too young to understand. Like they didn't ask for their parents to be this famous, you know? And some of them, you know, use their kids more than others, but it's just that constant, like, where some people do protect their kids more from paparazzi and still go around their way. And that's just kind of how I feel about the situation with uh, Jeremy Allen White's family. And I know I keep saying AKA Lip or AKA Bear. Yeah. So that was just kind of my two cents on that little piece. We all know where I'm going to go next with this as far as pop culture is going because I did spend a little bit of time on Taylor Swift's fun, fun, fun new bow. <sighs> but aside from that, uh, Hillary Duff, let's, let's dive into that just a little bit because for starters, anything Dear Media has now made me want to go, oh, goodbye, not, like, this is my Dear Media. Dear Media, stop, stop, for the love of God. I know that you are one of the best people to put out stuff but seriously for the love of god stop the interviews literally this was just oh just as bad as gwyneth and the problem is that gwyneth doesn't openly admit to having a disorder and hillary duff like we're gonna start there he used to say oh i'm proud of me this is what celebrities always do and then just mess with your brain all the time. And then it's like, I have had so many moments lately where it's like the glass is shattering on when you find out these people aren't as great as you see. Yes, you know not to meet your heroes. Yes, you know that they're not probably as great as they seem. But you know, when they tried to preach about body positivity, loving their curves, the heroin chic era is still there. And you know that Hillary's kind of, yeah. And she's like, I might get into trouble for this. No, like, sweetie, you're in trouble. And I hate saying that, but it's true. Like, again, we thought that the sister that was going to be problematic, which she is anyway, Haley, but we, we're not going to get into that either. But ugh. there's just so much going on where it's like, I don't know if I can watch How I Met Your Father after this after this interview because again it's just starting to 
kind of boil over in my opinions of certain celebs that you kind of used to look up to and then suddenly like real you know things come out about them and yet we still just kind of ignore it like celebrity memoir book club is great at digging up this dirt and saying their real opinions about these people or how like these people are coming to light and seeing the sides of it all and how it truly deep dives into the chaos of knowing too much information. But again, I love Celebrity Memoir Book Club. I loved Dunzo Podcast. Hopefully that for Troy's sake, that's getting, you know, figured out right now still because that that needs to be it gave me a lot of ways. Both of them have given me a lot of insight to how to do a podcast but at the same time, I'm doing this solely by myself, but it's still different. And I know that there's just a lot of layers, etc. But I do also feel like so much of our podcasts now have been getting really boiled down. And more of them are just staying uh, from celebs who... And I say this because it's true. At this point, nobody's doing really rewatching. They're just complaining, just name dropping. Again, influencers doing the same thing. It's like, I can't listen to any of these podcasts anymore. And it's driving me nuts. I and I wasn't even in the Laguna Beach era. So, of course, I'm not going to watch and listen to Stephen Coletti and Kristen Cavallari rewatch but so many people love all these and it's like office lady pod is the like the only one that i can really handle pod meets world and i know that i'm kind of name dropping right now but it's just these are my feelings i feel like when a lot of these people have you know said oh we're gonna do a rewatch it doesn't turn into that it turns into a gossip fest because they have nothing better to do and a lot of the time, it just doesn't feel like right anymore. It just actually feels like they're trying to prove their self work constantly. And I get it. That's imposter syndrome. I get it that, you know, things didn't turn out the full way that you thought it would. But I do want to say recently, two interviews have really, I've appreciated more than usual, which is not because of interviewer or who's around, but just the way that these two people really, you know, answer and are pretty real back. But I don't know if that's always the case. Like, obviously, if they went on a podcast themselves or did their own thing. But I really appreciate the guy who played Zeke on Wizards of Waverly Place. And, you know, Chelsea Danielson from, uh, you know, That's So Raven, Raven's Home, Annalise Vanderpool, because she is, you know, just, she just seems really honest in her ways of explaining things. She's never seems to tiptoe around answering a question. She doesn't give off a clickbaity vibe. She just... She gives a very genuine, doesn't try to make money off of everything either. And, you know, the podcast game is so saturated right now that I know my titles might not be clickbaity enough, but I even hate how clickbaity they're becoming. And I know clickbait's the only way to win, you know, meeting up with influencers, all that. It's just that the more that I find and the more that I deep dive on that stuff, it's like... Do I want to be popular or do I want to be my unique self? And I think that that's a lot of things like identity issues that people struggle with. And especially when I'm starting to realize more and more as time goes on that part of me kind of wants to be myself, unique self, obviously, because of the ADHD. But part of me wants to fit in. And then it's like that never ending match. And I see it within my own family. And, you know, it's just all over the board. But I feel like, you know, separately, but those two that, you know, Annalise and Dan were, they've just, um, maybe it, their career might have not turned out completely the way they wanted. And I'm not trying to put words into it, but I'm talking more about Dan with his only fans, et cetera, and just watching his interview but it, it makes sense suddenly like 
but they're being realistic. They don't seem gossipy at all or, you know, trying to win or one up anyone. It just it felt like the most real and genuine moments out of any podcast interviews I've listened to in a long time. I do sometimes like armchair expert. It just takes so long. I'm not a fan of chicks in the office. It gives me just too much of that mean girl energy. I know because it's run by Barstool and I used to probably look up to the Barstool a little bit. But the more time goes on and the more that I mature, the less I feel like I want to be in this like it crowd. And I know people are going to be like, oh, I'm getting the I'm not like other girls vibe. No, no, trust me. I do not like those pick me kind of. I have that in my family, trust me. I do not like that vibe and I try so hard to run away from it. But then I also realized that that's my struggle between ADHD and attention or whatever. But then I also realized that that's my struggle between ADHD and attention or whatever. Keeping friends is not always the best. And you know what? I want to talk about that a little bit because I was talking to family the other day and you know what I was realizing just because I got a little too honest and you know I didn't want them to feel totally bad but just to see from my perspective too but I think that like when you have ADHD, it, it's harder to hold on to friends, harder to keep friends, whatever this rejection, sensitivity, dysphoria, and the strong sense of justice. I just want to say yet again, part of me, you know, might take things sometimes too literally when my family tried to scare the crap out of me early on, like, don't get into danger and stuff but the more time that I spend the more I realize though that you know no matter what you do in life yes people are probably not gonna like you more likely if you are neurodivergent and it's a sucky thing and it won't get fixed and when people say it gets better it really depends on the person and I've been slowed down because of COVID but I will say there's one thing that I can't do And that is, you know, go with the flow. That is be, you know, play the games to fit in because I, again, have seen too much of that bully mentality and I just can't handle it. And I know that that's wrong, but it's just like in my heart. And I think a lot of other people have said this with ADHD. It's just like that strong sense of justice, like that strong sense of right and wrong. And I know not everything is black and white, But that's kind of where I'm at in the point of this world and just kind of where I am. And yeah, people can say you took things too literally, but I'm not the only one in my family. But yes, just so everyone knows. And yes, this is so sad and so loser-ish. I don't have very good friends. I don't have friends. And the funniest part is before anybody says... Oh, that happens a lot of times after, you know, you graduate high school and college. No, 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 no. That that happened all throughout school. And maybe it is because I talk too much or I'm too loud or I try to process things. But you know what? I watched Rita Moreno's documentary recently, and it was the best thing for me. Because for starters, I rewatched a lot of Electric Company on... PBS when I was a little kid and I used to go around running and yelling hey you guys like she did and you know she was just this comfortable person she was loud she was opinionated she was a force to be reckoned with and again I didn't really put it together until she was Abuelita and did that hey you guys all over the place um on one day at a time but yes she taught me all the stuff where I was told, you know, separately within my family, that's not ladylike, that's not how you should behave as a lady, blah, 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 blah. Again, just society, patriarchy, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, maybe I needed better manage, maybe whatever, but boys could do whatever, girls have to, yeah. So, and then people want me to calm down, people want me to be less loud, people want me to not be me. 
And you start to feel like you're the problem, even though they're trying to make it easier for you. And then that turns into a lot of self-doubt. And I get it that that's probably what a lot of those influencers, all those actors, et cetera, feel from childhood exploitation, et cetera. But the point is that, you know, what I see is when I get the vibe that something's off, I'm usually pretty right about it. And I know that that's kind of like snotty and mean to say, but I've just decided that that's okay. Because at the end of the day, what matters is what can you feel in your heart? And I've been slowly healing myself more and doing a lot more of that kind of shadow work as well. And I think that, you know, just that thing that goes inside of you when you're in your 20s, suddenly finding out who you are more as a person. And now the funniest part is, yeah, I've kind of known who I was since I was a little kid, but that's just separately. And I'm allowed and I'm probably obnoxious to people. I'm passionate. I'm nice, but kind. I don't know how to describe it without sounding like a complete and total tool or narcissist because I don't want to come off that way. And I know that before anybody says whatever critical thing they're thinking, I know what I know, but the see, this is what goes on inside a person's head. Like sometimes, especially neurodivergence, we have to process it out loud to so many different people till we finally actually come to a decent solution. And I know that it sucks that I keep mentioning my neurodivergence, but you know what? That's okay. Cause something needs to be a theme. Something needs to be your niche. I guess my niche is, you know, talking about my everyday life, what I'm dealing with, blah, 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 and just my ADHD. And I think I say that every week, but you know what, you know, and I just cannot get over how many times I see though this post where people go, you know, podcasts fail super easily because, you know, celebrities are taking over the influencer. I mean, yes and no, but the problem is that it's such a saturated content to begin with that you know you get lost in the shuffle and if you have more followers you probably get more views and as much as I come on here and kind of get upset with it the one thing I can say without a doubt is that you know some of you guys are getting scammed out there like you're saying that you're spending like 100k 1k etc like between 1 and 100k when you're not even like remotely known Hello, I'm doing this in my house in a home studio. Yes, I know I probably spent more than a hundred bucks on everything in total, but you know, I'm not getting scammed out. I'm not getting, maybe I'm not getting as many views as I could, but you know what? At the end of the day, I know I'm in the top like 50% as, you know, if you get more than 25 to 35 downloads a week or in that range, and you're a small creator that does everything, you know, you're putting your blood, sweat, and tear into this. And I know that sometimes it feels like you're not doing enough. But if you can keep going, I guarantee you there's still listeners out there. They just might not want to. At least this is what I keep reading. And yes, I read a lot, surprisingly, ironically, because I got dyslexia as well. Again, I can be like a dry goldfish, you know, without water sometimes when it comes to ADHD and OCD. But, you know, that's just life when trying to help out with things. But it's true. And sometimes the smaller people get less recognition. And and that's okay. Because at least in my heart, like a lot of other people, you know, in your heart, like, You're trying every week. You're making it with everything that you have. And at least you don't have ads. I know ads are like as making it, but you guys can sit down and listen for the whole 30 to 40 minutes without any interruptions. Now, that's not great for me because I would want to get paid more, but it just shows like you don't have to listen in 2x speed either because it's already a short podcast. Here are more reasons why my podcast is amazing, just in case you hadn't realized it, but just some selling points, if you will, if you're new here. 
also welcome. Um, but yeah, some some five selling points. 35 minutes is uh, average of my podcast usually. So 30 to 40 minutes. You can listen to it on your way to school work, school, you name it, and on the way back, finish it or whatever. And then uh, no ads whatsoever, because I am not connected to anything, really. Obviously, I talk about a wide variety of topics going on in the world. And even though it's just me talking, I think that I have enough of energy and mentality and realism that I can bring to the table without, you know, trying to interview everyone to death. I've had a bunch of great interviews with great people, lesser known people, but people that you know of, and I bring on a wide variety. And I've stayed consistent every Monday. So yeah, I think I got some good qualities. I post on YouTube, I post on TikTok and Instagram as well if you're curious about more. But yeah, those were some five reasons why you might want to consider listening to this. Obviously, the no ads is a big reason, but we'll we'll circle back to that the next week. As we wrap up here, I do want to talk about, yes, I was re-watching Baby Daddy. Obviously, some other jokes would not fly today. And again, them talking about how fat Riley was, that pissed me off so much a lot of the time because for starters, so many women deal with body dysmorphia, men, people, you name it. And like I said earlier with that Hillary Duff stuff, ugh. but you know, they show a video of her on her sweet 16 and I kind of forgot about this of her being overweight and how she had to lose 90 pounds. And I'm like, looks like she doesn't weigh any more than like 150. So, so, so like they kept always talking about how she was like Rigantor and this huge, and I get it like, but her and like Fat Monica, that's like, uh, that doesn't fly with me. And this is no hate to Courtney Cox or Chelsea Kane. I just started to feel like, uh, uh. And, you know, being an elder Gen Z, geriatric Gen Z, yeah, we kind of did have a little bit of that heroin chic era where it's not great and now it's still kind of throwing on because what's healthy versus not healthy? Here's the thing, follow dietitians. I know not everyone's going to agree with every dietitian, but again, the intuitive eater dietitians who still lay down science, but also explain the whole thing about how I wish it was as simple as calories in, calories out and scientists getting mad at them. Yes, yes, we understand. And they're trying to, everyone's trying to stay in their lane, I think 90% of the time, but it just happens. Now, Dr. Sood, ugh, that guy is a pain management special who goes on. He is not someone that you should be trusting. He takes advantage of women's pain. And so, like, he's someone I will never ever, ever endorse. And by the way, did I get stupid enough to believe him on a little bit of the level? Yes. But then when I heard from actual people and now he's selling disturbing like MLM stuff. Yeah, no, no. And you can report him, but he's not coming down at all. But he's like wondering why women don't trust him. There's so many reasons, dude. But that was kind of separately another thing. But it's just like watching those shows. It's like, no wonder our brains are fucked up. And no wonder like Special K, the itsy bitsy teeny weeny, yo play light kind of stuff. Growing up when I was a kid, like people go, oh, millennials dealt with that. But yeah, early Gen Zers are too. Elder Gen Zers. And I guess it never will go away. And I think about that a lot too. But you know, the funniest part is, like, I'm Irish. I have this other thing where I'm going to talk about how separately different, like, my family is than other. But when we're talking, like, crazy family stuff, like, my big fat Greek wedding always comes up. I know it's one of, like, my family's movies. They think they relate to it, whatever. And I still find it funny. Uh, the third one's coming out. And every time I see Tula, Vula, all of those ants i'm like why couldn't that happen like you need to eat more and stuff no 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 no. my culture is less about that and be a good girl and stuff like that it's just so funny though like how the similarities and differences parallel but it's like no 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 guys eat girls don't like that's always been the stigma 
And then it's like, yes, but boys can go through eating disorders. Everyone can go through them. I think especially with the muscle and the thinness, there's always that never-ending battle. I think a lot of people know what I'm I'm getting at without trying to go overboard. But yeah, it's just, there's so much going on. And I just meant that the reason though that I was laughing so hard is because my family's doing some Ireland trip in August. I'm not going on it, but where, but just that scene where you get off the plane and then you're related to someone, I just feel like that could happen <laughs> to me. I could, I feel like that would happen because I still have family that lives there and so on and so forth. Not so much any other place. And yes, I'm a Luxembourg citizen, but that's different. And, but yeah, anytime I watch something that's got the My Big Fat Greek Wedding family involved, I'm like, yeah, that's a little too relatable. So obviously I, I'm going to talk a tiny bit about the whole ADHD thing. In Grey's Anatomy, they still expanded on that. They didn't get rid of it. They're really working hard. Scott Speedman and Nico Taro do not miss a beat at all. And honestly, Jules and Max are so great together. I love Bailey coming back to her resident era. We need that girl back. She, I bet she steals a lot of Lexi and Izzy in Jules. And it's, yes. Anyway, here's my problem. And I know I talk about Mika. I love her. But I hate her lately because she's been nothing but rude. And yes, I'm going to be on Little Shepherd's side all the time now with his ADHD. Did she get a little better this episode? Yes. Do you not like Blue? Yes. Do you still think Blue screwed up because of Max? Yes. Do you whatever? Uh huh. And at the same time, I know I say whatever every time, but it's still true. It's just kind of where my brain goes because it's like you don't really want to get into it much more. But uh, one thing you like about Maxine's relationship with Jules is just that she she made a lot of mistakes in her life, but now she finds that they both find comfort in each other, and that's great. As far as Griffith, Simone, you need to not go after. I've been saying this since September, and I know that I'm one of the very few people, but just get in Addison's PTR and drive and find yourself. And I mean that. You both deserve so much better. I know I should not be this attached to fictional people, but it's true. Just get in the damn car and don't look back. Get in the damn car and don't look back. I know your grandma's not doing well in the show, and obviously you have to look back at some point, but seriously, girl, either get in the damn car, drive, or move in with Jules and help Max through her stuff. But seriously, you cannot keep living in the intern house. I feel like if she moves out, then, well, I mean, we don't really want Blue moving in, but it would give a different dynamic. And it would be kind of like Alex moving into the intern house after, you know, George moved out. And the only reason that I am really, truly invested in that is because here's the thing. I want to be like team Simone all the way. I want to be on the girl's side. But here's the problem. When you're constantly toying with people, and I know that you were trying to figure out your own thing, but we've seen this already with the J-Pro and the Meredith. We do not need that again. And I keep seeing that. But the more time that goes on, the more that I see the thing about ADHD, the more that I see that truly, I don't believe it's like Meredith with George. You still have a little more feeling, but it's too much of that where you really can't figure it out. And it's for the best if you just leave the poor boy alone. Hopefully, Trey unfortunately leaves you or you leave him personally I'd love you to leave him uh I'd love him to do a burke if anything but the problem is that he's a mess himself but it's like girl seriously choose yourself choose yourself choose the friendships they ruined joe link seriously they had mayor lex i was hoping that mayor lex was gonna be like the thing between like i thought mayor lex would be the lumone that's what i was hoping for lumone that's yeah but now it, okay whatever that's just yeah we're it's great i'm fine but yes as more time goes on and i see the lucas connecting with his patient aka Little Shepherd. From now on, I'm actually going to do for my reaction series when I do the subtitles, FYI, for anybody who cares. 
I'm for now on calling Amelia Big Shep, which I know that for, for a lot of reasons, I should call her just Shep because technically Derek was Big Shep, but whatever. But I'm trying to get back that little gray, big gray kind of vibe, even though nobody really called Mayor Big Gray, but you get where I'm going with this. Anyway, uh, but yesterday, Thursday, whatever, that video, the day that the, it just felt like, I think the reason that I'm so attached and don't want, like, this relationship that I'm pretty sure will flame out, and why I think Lucas deserves better, especially from friends, et cetera, is because I, I'm, I've been there as a person, and I think other people can attest to that. And it, it just because he's rich doesn't mean that he hasn't struggled his own. And I'm not saying because again, they needed to get better at fixing up on like all their issues for the residency program again. That is not the issue. And again, I was thinking about Nico for a second. Uh, Shmiko, that Nico with uh, Nico Kim. Like, where the hell has he been? He's toxic, don't get me wrong. But him and Schmidt, like, I'm thinking about that right now. Where he got, both of them had gotten overworked and burned out, whatever. But I'm thinking Schmidt needs a little bit more, you know, of a pay raise. I'm not 100% happy with him this season. Don't get me wrong. One of the best things they did about this week's episode is finally gave it as co-chief resident because nobody should have to do that job once. And yes. Also, when I think about the people winning the Catherine Fox Award, do I want Winston to win? Of course, a hundred percent. But do I want Nick to win? Yes. And why do I want Nick to win? Because of that golden scene of because losers like us don't get nominated. Even if we're not losers. Again, last week, monumentally written, beautifully written with the why be being typical is just so boring. Yeah, like we don't need to be typical. Obviously, I am not typical with how my voice changes and my my expression. You can tell. Also, I don't think most typical people would do a podcast. And yes, I know that it's being like, but everybody has a podcast now. But yeah, you. but the people that have a successful one, and I guess because I guess I might be more typical because I don't have a super successful podcast. So yeah, but yeah, we are here. And that is just why I really need Nick Marsh to win. I love you, Winston, but I need Nick Marsh. I wish they made Winston also ADHD because then that could be like killing two birds with one stone. <laughs> but yeah, I really, really, really know that and feel it <laughs> in my soul. Uh, Amelia, definitely, I should be posting soon more clips of her, but I don't think that Winston's being immature also with his silent treatment towards her. Also, all of the whininess of who doesn't get nominated for a Catherine Fox. Bailey, I love you, but that HIV, that HIV moment was not your best moment. Stephanie, Stephanie covered for you. Do you not remember that that was illegal? Do you not remember that that was illegal? Aside from that, yes, you should have been nominated with the domino procedure. I, the one thing I'm a little bit more, yes, I am a little bit more Derek as being the slightly better shepherd. Here's why. Yes, maybe, you know, Amelia has a like lesser um, death rate, all that. But again, 0.9 to on under 2% her Karasik and Derek all have. So again, you got three of the foremost neurosurgeons going on over there. And you know what? I personally believe Derek did not care. Again, he had ADHD. He was a tumor junkie. He he was addicted to finding the tumor, getting the tumor out. He did, he took on impossible cases, more impossible than what Amelia does, okay? Like, that's the truth. She does more routine surgery. She's not looking out for the great white tumor. Yes, she took out Herman's tumor, but aside from that, she hasn't really done a lot. And yes, the Parkinson's, she could consider winning or being nominated for one. But what about Derek's glioma? So, you know, there's just like a lot of suddenly you're like, oh, a lot of them have not been nominated for anything and they should. So, yeah, I'm kind of on the Bailey side there, though, like where, <laughs> you know, she's not mentioning Derek, but she was about to be like, I could tell, I could see it where she's like, oh, Amelia, Derek didn't even get nominated for any prestigious award. And again, him and Nick are very similar in some ways, too, which I know that that's a little Larry, but yeah. The part of the matter is, though, I do like how suddenly people have kind of come up with, like, a DeLuca 
vibe from Lucas, more so than George, more so than Alex, more so than Jackson, but he still parallels Jackson the most, in my opinion. But yeah, it's just all those things that he said to himself in these past two episodes are exactly stuff that I say to myself constantly. And look, for people who's asking me once again as I wrap this up, I'm not inherently late. ADHD diagnosis. I just got misdiagnosed with it, which I guess is probably worse, honestly. I was labeled more inattentive, but as everyone knows that I'm more, but I was hyperactive. And the more that you look at hyperactive version in girls, I'm more of a combo, obviously, now, but you see it. And again, they just don't do enough studies. And that's what really bothers me about the whole thing. So, yeah. But the funniest part is that my mom kind of fought for me there. And, you know, at the same time, she's like, you don't have it. So there's just like a constant like battle of I don't really know. And this is just where you're human. And I get that it's become a lot of redundancy along the way, but it's true. And the way that I see it also within the Shepherd family, they just prefer to place blame on everyone or the overachiever, all the things that Nick said. So yeah, um, do I look forward to the next week's episode? Who knows? You know that, you know me, I always starting to turn it off only because I don't really, really, really care about Joe Link. I think she's better off with the new guy, Sam. Link gets super territorial like a dog he acts like he doesn't want it then he does want it and then it's all the same stuff with amelia that made me not like him with amelia but amelia with kai they uh, all that drama it's like gives me a headache and i know that i'm talking like nonsense because this is great but can we just focus on friendships for once because i've had enough scene and people can tell me i can just turn it off obviously yeah but Look, if the 20th season's the last season, obviously I'll keep watching. But at this point, I do think that there's good possible spinoff ideas or good possible kind of just where, what if they do, like I said, the Mika MD, the Shepherd MD, all that kind of stuff, or Addison or driving around in that little car, you know, that type of spinoff or a web series. I don't know, but I just feel like even Sandra, Sandra Rhymes is like, no, I'm done with this. Like, there were some lots of things that I clearly just talked about that I clearly got off my chest that needed to be said. So as we continue on to next week, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Hit like, subscribe, comment below. If there's anything that you want me to talk about, please DM Gen Z Gab Instagram, as well as again, for the love of God, just pay your damn writers what they want. The strike cannot go on like the other ones have, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. Stand with the BGA. We will see you next week.